Welcome back to part two of painting simple objects. Um, it's, it was really fun the first part and I, I enjoy doing it. And th this part I'm going to be focusing on uh, two objects. I'm going to be focusing, focusing on a little box and a knife. Again painted very simply and uh, not, not freely is what I'm looking for. Um, I'm, I'm imagining that I'm, I'm sort of closing my eyes or half closing my eyes and the objects being blurred a bit. So I'm trying to get away from the idea of painting in detail. So we'll get straight into it and I hope you have fun and maybe you can paint along with it if you can and uh, let's see how it goes. We're going to have a go at something else now and it's going to be this little pot, this square pot with a lid on it. And it's an interesting shape because it, it has planes which, which are quite good to, to paint. So we we'll do a quick drawing of it, again in my little 2B pencil. I'll try and press a bit harder so you can see it. So just quickly work out the shape. Okay, something, something like that. Okay, that's the shape of it there. And then the shadows come off on the side. Okay, I'm not, try, I'm not trying to, be, to make it perfect. I'm, I'm not really interested in that today. I really want you to just give it a go more than anything else and not worry about making mistakes on it. Right, so I've done a little drawing of it and a very simple drawing, just a little box. And now I'm looking to have a really close look at the colours of it. This is, it's a sort of bluey, browny, grey colour. So let's get some colours mixed on the palette. So I'll put some blue there, clean the brush, and I've got some fresh water for this one. So it's good to start a new project with some fresh water. There's some burnt umber, and I think some raw sienna would be quite nice. So pop that in, pop that up there. And maybe a little bit of hooker's green as well. Just, it's got an interesting green colour, that. And probably the uh, cerulean blue as well. So I'll put some cerulean blue down. So those are the colours I'm going to use for this picture, mainly. Right, now let's, let's try and think about it a bit. Um, the top, again, trying to introduce some interesting colour to it. I don't, I don't necessarily want to paint it exactly. That doesn't interest me. And these are these are th these pictures, these little lessons I'm going to give to you. Try and have a go yourself at it, but try to keep it simple. Keeping it simple is is I always say that keep it simple, and it just makes things easier. Right. So the first layer, interesting color. Remember, so a bit of blue on the top. Change the color a bit. Add a little bit of brown. So that's quite an interesting color there. And now we're going to go on to the side. So a bit lighter on this side, because that's where the light's coming from. There. And now we're going to put the darker side in. So maybe a bit of blue, darker blue, ultramarine blue. And that's that side going in. So that's quite effective. You see that looks like the planes of the, of the pot. And now we're going to put in a little shadow. So I'm going to make that ultramarine blue and a little bit of alizarin crimson at the bottom. So, so lots, you see the colours mixed up there? You can still see them there. It's sort of intermingling together. And we're going to pop some of those colours on. like that and maybe a little lighter ones at the top there so that's the first moments of the painting so what we'll do now is just let that dry for a bit and tackle the second layer but as you see quite simple there wasn't much to it and that took 20 30 40 seconds something like that Right, so that's the, the first layer and it's dried off a bit, or quite a lot with a little hairdryer. And I, I think that looks really pretty now. I love, I love the way that the colours have intermingled and I, I think it's, 
it has a QB look to it, which is what I'm, I'm aiming for. Now we're going to add a little bit of, of um, sort of refinement on it. So I'm going to put in the, the sort of brown here. And then it trying to always try I'm looking at value first. So the, the brown on this side is, is, a, is a much darker brown. So I'm going to keep that dark and then change the color again. Add in the blues, cobalt blue, and make that interesting. And that's too, too dark. So cerulean blue along this edge here, because that's in shadow, and then it goes darker at the back. I'm looking at values more than anything else, the lightness and darkness of what I'm painting sort of goes darker towards the edges of it. And then we've got on this side, the darker side, it goes brownish sort of color at the bottom. So I'll give a bit of that. And there's a lovely line where the two sides meet. So the light side and the dark side, there's sort of line down here, which is quite fun. Maybe I'll soften this into the background. Then at the bottom, maybe a bit of raw sienna and brown bottom section here. There's a brown smidgen. Again, I can soften that edge to there. Too much water. You just soak the water up if it's too much. soften a few edges. So you see that's, that's turned it into a much more of a cube shape. Now this, this line here is a bit funny because in, in reality it's a soft tone, so a soft transition. So I've got a bit of clean water and I run my brush down it and it just softens that down. So that's nice, I like that. And I might soak up, it does, does create, it does have a little bit of pooling because the, the angle I've got. So just soak a bit of that up just so you can dry a bit more. Okay. Then right at the bottom of it, there's quite a dark brown in here. Maybe add a bit of blue as well. So I'm, I'm not trying to paint every dot and comma. I'm just trying to keep it simple and try and let the paint describe it much more than me describing it. There we go. And then maybe add a little bit more to the shadow. Right, and that's pretty good on that. So I let that dry again. So there's the basic shapes down now. And um, I, I love the way that the paint has sort of moved around all by itself. That's what watercolor is all about. Um, so now the, the, the last phase of it is just adding a few highlights. And again, I'm going to use uh, white paint for that. And it's gonna, be, it's gonna have a little bit of a possible blue tone on it as well. So there we go, there's a bit of white. And now we've got the the shine along here, whiter. A few marks there. Just to indicate a few things, I don't overdo the white, but I do find it a useful thing just to give a little bit more descriptive description of the, of the, of the picture. Okay, so that's helped it a bit. And so I'm t I take another look at it and I say, well, what needs to be done? And maybe a few darker aspects of it. So I'll gain, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the ultramarine blue, and the burnt umber, and I'm gonna paint a sort of darker shadow in, in here. Give a hint of that anyway. There's also a darker shadow underneath it. Right, 
here as well. Just to give you, give it just a bright, sort of give a bit more contrast on it. And then here, just to give the curve of that. Okay, okay, so that's it. Quick and effective. So it, it, it's, it has a nice feel to it. It's, it's not absolute reality. It's an interpretation of what I've just seen. And um, it, it looks good for that. The, the, the impression that watercolour has is so beautiful. The, 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 the difference between oil paint and watercolour is that uh, watercolour is like uh, crystal clear. Uh, whereas watercolour is quite a heavy sort of medium, but sometimes the colours in oil paints can be brighter than watercolour, but it doesn't have that same clarity. So here we, here we have the, uh, the picture with the, the painting done now, and I really like that. I, I particularly like this mottled effect here. So the last thing I, I quite like to do with, um, with a little still life is a, the little bit of pencil work that just describes what's going on a bit, a bit more. Um, and it just brings out the shape a little bit. So I, I quite like that, that part of it. And uh, there we go. That, I think that's, maybe you, you, can, you can actually draw onto the, onto the picture as well. And there's all sorts of writing around here on it, which you could just, just hint at with the pencil work. And there are a few spots here and there, which you put in. There we go. And I think that's helped us a bit. We're going to attempt the last object of this demonstration now. And um, it's, it's a knife. And it, you can just go into your kitchen and find a knife. So I'm trying to pick things that are around people's homes that they, so that they can have a go at it. Right, we'll, we'll start with the drawing. So we'll, something very, very roughly, I'm, I'm, my drawings are quick at the best of times. Blade. So just trying to get get things roughly in place. Again, it's the it's the painting for me that refines it. But this the the, the drawing just gives me a sort of idea where things are going to go. And then we've got the knife coming in here. The handle. One. Two. Three. So there's the knife drawn in quickly. Uh, it, that's, that's one thing I love to do is paint quickly. And it's partly because I'm a landscape painter and I don't, there is no time to, um, to, to really muck around too much. And that's, that's the, the drawing of the knife done. Right, so here, here, here we've got all the pictures now. This is, this is the knife that's come in here in this one sheet of paper. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it, it looks, it looks pretty. So, the most important thing is to give it a go. Um, don't, don't expect too much of yourself in, in this. And uh, watercolour is um, an interesting medium in that you can't really fight it too much. It will go where it wants to go. And it's important to realise that and, and let it go too. Right, so we're going to get back into the painting of the knife now. And um, it's an interesting thing because it's got this very light blade, which, is good, which needs a bit of contrast. Hopefully we'll see it against the whiteness of the of the paper. Right, so let's work out the colours. A little bit of cerulean blue up there. Wash the brush. Ultramarine blue. Wash the blush. Cobalt blue. Really interesting blues in the in the metal of this. And we're going to put a bit of brown, burnt umber. Aren't that many colours in this. It's, it's a very cold sort of colour. Right, okay, now here we, here we have the, the blade here, and I'm going to start on the left, and the, 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 when I, as I go, I mentioned again, when, when I look at it, it's different from the photograph that you can see. It starts very light here, then it progressively gets darker along the blade. So what I'm really looking for is the, is the highlights, and to be, w watch out for where the highlights are, and try not to overpaint them. Right, here we go. So just a plain bit of cerulean, and I'm going to start at the end, nice and light, and then work in. That's nice. Trying to make it light at the end, picking right at the end. So you see that the blades, the blades progressively getting darker. So again, mix the colours up so it's darkening off 
as it goes. Maybe that's too dark, but it doesn't matter. Remember, it doesn't matter for this. Uh, the, these, little, these are experiments. They're not, the fi they're not finished work, so you don't have to worry about them too much. Okay, there's the blade. I think there's a little bit, it's a little bit darker at the top, which I'm going to put in. Okay, there's the blade. Now, there's a very light patch here, which you've got to keep. So I'm going to start behind that. So here. Trying to keep that light patch in. Always, always be aware that it, these, these are tonal paintings that we're doing here. We're looking at light and dark as the most important part of it. I'm going to go along with a bit more cerulean here. Trying to keep, we can always add a little bit more white at the end. Although sometimes people do think, oh, that's not a good idea, but I don't mind, I don't mind using um, white paint. Right. Now I'm going to put the, the little rivets in before I paint the back, the, the knife at the back. One, two, three. So those are pretty much the lighter tones of the knife in. Maybe a bit more here as well. I'm watching wherever the silver is at the moment. Okay, and now I think I'm going to add the shadow a bit too now. I think it's a good time for it. So get a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little alizarian crimson. Not too dark. I'm going to pop that in. Here. That's not quite dark enough. And here. There. So that's the first part of the painting done. And I'll let that dry now. So here we have the, the lights done, and the mid-tones done really, and it, it's a very much a blue tone picture, and I've let them dry for a bit. Um, but as you said, the first bit was very quick as well. Now we, we come to the actual handle of it, and that's a really interesting problem because it, it's basically black. And uh, I have black here, but black here on my paint, but I don't really want to use that because that would be boring. It would be dull colours. So again, I'm going to use my two favourite colours, which are ultramarine blue, pop that there, and burnt umber. So those are the colours I'm going to use for my picture. Right, so mixed, again not mixing them, not homogenizing it all into one colour. I'm going to pick um, the colours separately and I'm going to apply them separately to the, to the painting. Right. Trying to get the right tone. That's a little bit of cerulean blue as well. I thought when I got to it, I thought that cerulean blue would be a nice colour. See how the colours mix on the paper. Trying to paint around the rivets. Moving towards the back. So this is a very much a value study on this. It's all, it is almost a black and white painting. Move along in the back. Always looking at the subject matter. My head's darting, always darting to the, towards what I'm painting. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Now underneath, in like that. Always looking very carefully. Now a bit of darker part here, coming behind the blade, and the top of the blade. 
just looking, looking, looking. I'm not, I'm not trying to imagine and soften that line. I'm not trying to imagine anything um, in terms of value. I'm trying to be very careful with looking at what the value is. And then a darker patch here. Another dark patch there. And now working towards the back. It's quite interesting, so I might come back to that later. Otherwise it's gonna to bleed too much into it. That's quite interesting there, I like that. So that gives us the first sort of layer on the black. And, and I think that's really quite interesting. So I'll let that dry now. So that's the second layer dried off now, and it's ready for the next layer, which is the painting in the dark parts of the knife. There's some very dark parts, and again, I'm going to use my two favorite colors, the ultramarine blue and burnt umber for that, because they do make interesting darks. And I'm going to add a little bit of, of uh, uh, Elizarian crimson to it. Right, here we go. So darkness. So this is going to give the sense of the, the handle underneath. And then it goes around. Just working on, just seeing where the lights and the darks come along. Underneath here. Trying to get the effects in. And on the top there's quite a dark section, which I'm gonna paint in just, or oh, maybe, maybe the cobalt blue. I like to experiment with the colours and I think it's important for you to experiment with the colours. You, you just try different things. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. But remember, this, this, is, this is for fun. It's not, it's not, it's not a serious thing. And what, what we're doing is we're just having a little bit of fun with watercolour paint. If it works, fine. And if it doesn't work, that's fine as well. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the side of the knife done. What I quite like to do as well is, is that there's there's a shadow underneath the blade. And I'm, I'm gonna try and give that shadow there as well. So there's a darkness right under the blade here. You see that? So that's that sort of brought that out a bit. Maybe let's work a little bit on the blade as well. Right here, there's a, there's a darkness on the top too. And it sort of, sort of goes down there. It's fun. Having fun with it, with it is, is so important. And I really enjoy this part, the top part of the blade. That's, that's something that's worked well for me. I like that. Maybe I'll soften this. So there's an edge here, right at the top. Now the, the blade is rounded, so I want to get rid of that a bit. So I'm going to get a bit of clean water and I'm going to run at the top and that will soften that down a bit. Make it a little bit more blurry. See that, isn't that amazing how that happened? So what, what I want you to do, if you can, is, is to take things around the house and just have a go at them. Just have a look at them and see whether you can um, have an attempt at making it look something like it is. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I've got a bit more shadow here. There we go. That's really fun. Right, okay, I'll let that dry and just put on the last few marks. I hope you agree now that that's looking quite a lot like the knife now, and it really has the feel of the knife, but done quickly, done, done quick as a flash. So the last parts of it I'm gonna do is, um, again, same as the previous ones, is to, is to put some white in it, just to get the reflection. So I'm gonna have another careful look at it, and I'm gonna put a bit of white there, and maybe a bit of white there. There's a nice patch of white coming down here as well. Just look carefully at what you're doing and you'll find these little areas where it might need a little bit of enhancing for you. A bit, a bit more water. As white paint's funny stuff because it does dry very quickly, which is a bit of a pain at times. It's not like any other color, if you want to call it a color. So just find in the little areas that we need. So that's making it look better already. 
And at the, the, I like the little bit of sharpness just in the blade here a bit. That's quite fun. Just trying to bring it out. Anything more? So maybe a little bit coming up here. Maybe I want to glue that down a bit. So a light blue along here where the handle's been, been used a bit. Shiny from use. A few marks where it's had a few dings. Right, and they'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that with one last thing, which I always like to do. I'll add a little bit of pencil work, particularly around the tip of the point, because you want to give it a little bit of separation from the background. So I'd, I'd just like to, just to give it a little bit of description with the pencil. And there we have it, that's it. So that's the knife. And you can see how, how it was, the really interesting part was this, this color here. I'll get a little, is this color here, where I, uh, I left it a light blue. And I, I really loved that. I thought that was, that was really impressionistic. It's not like that in reality, but I, I think it worked really nicely like that. So here we have all the pictures I've just done. And I, I really like them. It's quite a fun sheet of paper. And it's, it's really interesting how they're all slightly bit different. I never put any pencil work on the avocado. So uh, maybe just put a bit around there. You, you could put, especially in the, in the, um, in the fleshy parts, you, you, could, you could add a few bits and pieces in there of it. So that might improve it a little bit, but I quite like that. Um, and a bit here. So that, they turned out quite nicely. Uh, this, this, this thing here, this reminds me of a technique that was in the 1930s called the Blotesque Technique. And it was basically blobs of color, blobs of watercolor. So that reminded me of that a bit. Let me come over to the cube. And I really like that. That has a wonderful feel of watercolour about it. I love the, the variety of the colour there. and uh, That worked out nicely. And then lastly, but not least, is the knife. And that, that was the one that I thought was the most fun and possibly the most realistic of it. Again, I love that, this, this light section in the, blade, in the handle here. And then the blade was quite nice as well. So they're all fun to do uh, and, and very quick. So what I'd like you to do, if, you, if, if you've got the time and the inclination to do that, is, is to grab some things from around your house. It doesn't matter what they are. Maybe not make them too complicated. Don't, don't make it like a, a, color, a, like a, like a jug or, or something which has complexity to it and it's difficult. Keep them easy and keep them simple and you'll, 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 get, you'll get to master the paints. And this is what this exercise is really about. It's, it's to master mixing paint and applying paint simply, not complicated stuff. And I, I always try and press it on people to try and keep things uh, sim as simple as possible, really. And that's when you start getting the benefits, really. Um, and I, I think that was, that was a really good example of, of trying to keep it simple. And I enjoy the little pencil work around it as well. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, got something from it, really, and maybe had a realisation. I always feel that when you realise something in painting, that's the moment that you've improved. When you've said to yourself, oh, that's a good idea, or oh, I really understand that, those are the moments which push you forward. They don't often happen, but they, they, do, they do happen, and that's when you've improved. It's not necessarily about hard work, it's those moments of realisation. The hard work is interesting because it takes hard work to come to those realizations. It's not the hard work that's improving you, it's the hard work to get to the realizations that, that makes you much better. As I mentioned before, the, the weather in Scotland is really bad at the moment. It's not, I'm not enjoying it and my, I see my first love is to get out and paint outside but watercolour in this sort of weather isn't that really fun and especially it has a little bit of rain and that's it. So next week, I, I thought I might have a little bit of a change and uh, painting indoors again. And I thought I'd have a go at some flowers. And um, it, it's not something I paint very often because my main obsession is going outdoors and painting landscape. But flowers are a fantastic thing to paint and they possess a lot of colour. And they, they're incredibly detailed. But again, I want to paint it in that, 
in that impressionistic feeling to it. So we're going to have these, these uh, flowers done simply and maybe quite big. Who knows? We'll, we'll decide that later. So that's, that's for next week, hopefully, unless the weather proves. So let me know if that's what you'd like to see. And I also like hearing from people uh, about their own experience within this technique. I find that fascinating. And to see whether it's, 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 it's giving them an insight into how to paint watercolour. So let me know how that goes as well. I, I do try to respond to every email I get. And uh, I spend a long time in the morning writing to people and replying to people. So it's something I enjoy and uh, enjoy encouraging people. Anyway, that's that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you could uh, give me a thumbs up, that one. And uh, if you can comment, that's always good. If you're commenting, it always makes the, makes the channel a bit more popular. So that's great if you can do that. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.